Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back, folks, to API 579-1. Part four, general metal loss, episode three. And this is a part of one of two series from example 4.1 of API 579-2. And that's the example problem book that goes with the, the, the standard 579-1 and the ASME equivalent. And uh, basically it's a shell and tube exchanger general corrosion and we want to evaluate whether this is fit for service but what's interesting is is that because it's an exchanger we have to worry about the internal pressure and the external pressure so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the internal pressure in this particular episode three and if you stick around for episode four we'll look at the external pressure evaluation so First of all, we're going to start with the inspection data, what we know about the, the equipment and, and how we rearrange things down to uh, what's, what is recommended in uh, part one and part two of the 579 standard. We're going to look at the, a level one internal pressure and evaluation, and then we're going to look at a level two internal pressure because in this particular example level one does not pass so let's let's jump right into this and and uh, take us where it needs to us to go so what we have here is we have internal corrosion on a shell and tube exchanger has been found and so that's the problem so we have to determine if it, the exchanger is suitable for continued operation So what we're going to do is we're going to look at particular example here of the shell and tube exchanger and put some things down. So it's, it's a type of a pressure vessel and the material of construction is API 5, 16 grade 60, very common in the 80s. It's an 89 construction. The pressure is 558 PSIG. In this particular example, I think we're working in, in, in um, Met Imperial, but we will add metric wherever we can to, to uh, make it more, you know, uh, it, uh, meaningful, meaningful to others. And uh, we have our design temperature of 250 and 380 degrees. So we have internal corrosion of the cylindrical shell of the of the heat exchanger and this is what we know so this is in case i blew this section up here so you could see this a little bit better so 558 psig or 3850 250 uh, degrees fahrenheit or 380 centigrade let's continue now, as we said earlier, we have internal corrosion. So we're assuming that this refer is general corrosion, which falls into part four. So we've arranged some of the mechanical properties. We, we, because of the year of the exchanger and the material, we're able to get the mechanical properties, the allowable stress, the yield stress, and the modulus of elasticity. And we're going to need that to calculate the, the pressure stresses, the hoop stresses in the unit, so that we can do our evaluation. And uh, as you probably suspect, it's we're going to basically uh, look at it in reference to you know, what material was left over. So we have some dimensions here. We have a fabricated thickness, a corrosion allowance, a tube sheet distance. And then we have pressure, uh, vacuum pressure and temperature. And uh, we have some operating conditions as well shown in Imperial. So we have a, a couple of evaluations to make. In this particular episode, we're going to look at the internal pressure of the unit. 
collaboration team has gathered us some really great information. I've put them into metric as well so we can see it, but I believe all the data is really more accurate in Imperial. Uh, so the inspection group who should be, you know, qualified to API 579 to do the inspections, um, they provided this general metal loss. And you can kind of look through the data and you can see that it looks pretty uniform, okay? So if you start to get some really deep losses in here, then you're going to have to consider part five. But in this case, I think we're, we're, we're okay for general corrosion. And uh, one, one thing that bear in mind that when we do a corrosion survey, there, because the, the method we're going to choose today is, is it's highly statistical, API indicates that the number of thickness readings must be at least 15. I mean, if there's 30, it's even better. And uh, this is the referencing paragraph shown here, 4332. And I believe that's in the later version as well, the 2017. So this in information you see here that we've already done some math. So how did we get there? Well, we, we're gonna calculate our coefficient of variation. So this table is from table 433 of API 579. And of course, API 579 is extremely procedural. And what's nice is this is all on a spreadsheet. So it's, you know, it's a piece of cake to once you set it up. So how does this work? So TM, basically what happens is you take all these numbers and you sum them together. And then you divide that through the number of samples. In this case, it's 15. And then you get basically an average, which is 12067. So that's the average number in that stack. And this COV is one of the oldest methods there are around. Now, what do you do with that? Well, you take 12, 13, subtract uh, 12.067, you get 0.93. And you do that over again, you pull down your spreadsheet and you get this value. Now you gotta take it and square it. So you take this value, you square it, and then you sum them all together. And then you get this, this value call uh, here. And um, it's 12.933. Calculated our, all our numbers from the table 43 format. We determined TM, TAM to be 12067, we've determined the S value is 12.933. We put those in the coefficient of variation equation, S in the numerator and TM in the denominator, and we get 0.08. Another value that we need is the minimum thickness, TMM. And basically you just take the lowest value that was found in that sample and you're ready to go. Step two, it's kind of a, a test. It's a test thing. So basically, if we, if our coefficient of variation is less than 10%, then we can proceed to step four with TAM value that we calculated. And in that case, then it would be the nominal thickness minus TAM, and we get 3933. Three, three. So let's calculate our thicknesses. So we can go for a category A1 weld. We can look at the equation here. So basically we're gonna calculate R. So we, we, we take half our inside diameter, future corrosion allowance plus the losses, and we determine R value in metric and imperial. And then we get the, the, the thickness required from for supplemental loads and so on. We would go to the 2007 version, Annex 8, paragraph 2A for a cylinder. And in 2016, they had you know, moved, moved the annexes around. And now it's in 2C. So then we, we calculate this for supplemental loads. In this case, we don't have any. And then we go cylindrical circumferential stress. We got to do a couple checks here. We have to check the, um, to make sure that the theory applies, thin wall theory. So that means that the, the 
this thickness has to be equal or less than the diameter over two. And there's another test here to do with the, the strength of the material. And if those criterion checks, then you can go on to do your standard uh, hoop stress, uh, circumferential hoop stress equation you can use. And from there we get 0.4 millimeters or, or, or inches or 10 millimeters. And then the longitudinal stress, which we'd expect it to be about half, is you know, more accurately calculated at about 0.194. So that's about right. And then we take the, the maximum of those. And of course, that's going to be always this. A lot of designers won't even bother with that if they know that you're taking the maximum value because um, the way the equation is, is and, it, and, and this is what you always expect. You always expect the circumferential stress to be higher because when even in, in the field, when a pipe breaks, it's going to split. Um, long, like, you know, because of the circumferential stresses. It has a whole bunch of tables for different shapes. Our case, we would go to table 4.4 for cylindrical shells, and all the equations are matched there. So we're going to take a look at the level one assessment, cylindrical and conical shells with elbows. This is the relationship that you have to follow if it's going to pass. You can see here there's there's also the um, the uh, this the spherical shells and the atmospheric low pressure tanks as well, and that's how they do it. So we're going to continue here. So T M minus future corrosion allowance is, must be equal or greater than T, T min. And we do our, our calculation and where we don't pass. <laughs> so we've, we have a level one assessments not satisfied. Therefore, we got to go to level two. Okay. We didn't pass the level one. We got to continue to level two. So we're going to go back to table 4.4 again. Not a big deal, but we're going to, we're going to take the right hand column and we're going to use this expression shown there. And basically, the, there's only one big difference there is something called an RSF factor, which is a remaining strength factor. So the next slide, we'll, we'll talk more about. We're going to continue with our level two assessment. We've added this remaining strength factor A and to the equation. And basically, when we start to put in the numbers now, we find that that 0.9 helps us and we get a pass. And so what is this RSF factor? Well, it's the it's found in, in part two and there's an earlier video about that. But basically, if we take, uh, because we're using it, this vessel, we were told an example, it was in ASME section eight, Weather pressure vessel codes is section eight, division one, pre-1999. We can use 0.9. And because this 0.9 is an expression of the allowances that the pressure, uh, the design factors that the pressure vessel code has. And so when you sharpen your pencil some more, you, we pass. So at the end of the day, we pass the internal assessment is, is satisfied for internal pressure, but we can't forget about external pressure because exchangers also have to be uh, considered for that, especially if there's issues like uh, vessels are being cleaned for steam out and you've got gases and so on. So let's uh, stay tuned for our next episode. I hope you found this interesting. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.